which question haven't I? Oh, you, yeah, I want you to talk about this. Um, it's uh, as an example of uh, one non quasi static process that you see this week. And so throughout this uh, whole thermodynamics portion of the class, you will see our um, bias for wanting to really work with the quasi static processes. It's uh, because um, it's not because all the it's not because it's a common uh, type of process in the real world. If anything, uh, real world processes are not really quasi static. Uh, in, under the right conditions, they can approximate it as quasi static. Um, but it's uh, assuming things are quasi static, meaning you assume that given a pressure volume diagram that um, if you have some process that's starting at some point and ending at some other point, we, um, we idealize that as the gas um, evolves, transforms from one state to the other state, that we can somehow track its progress through every infinitesimal step. Um, that assumption helps us uh, grab a handle on how we analyze those processes. So, um, and in order for us to do that, the process has to be quasi-static. So that's uh, why for most of this class, you will only see quasi-static processes. But we do have to acknowledge that, um, that not everything is quasi-static one. And there are some processes that cannot even be um, idealized as being quasi-static. There's, uh, for these particular types of processes, we just have to give up and acknowledge that there is no way to describe this process as being quasi-static. And what you have in this question is that, it says uh, dilute gas is stored in the left chamber. And um, so, so you might say, okay, so this could be our initial state for that gas. Uh, it has some pressure and it has some volume of uh, not. And uh, whose walls are perfectly insulating and the right chamber is evacuated. When the partition is removed, the gas expands and fills the entire container. Answer the questions below. So part A asks how much work is done by the gas in the free expansion? And um, it's almost in the word free expansion. In this free expansion, no work is done. And if you are looking at this picture that I've been drawing, you might be confused. I hope you are confused at least briefly because as you're looking at this picture that I'm drawing, you should have been visualizing this area under the curve so isn't this how much work done? How, how much work is done in the expansion? And um, and this is where I have to emphasize that whenever you draw a path in a PV diagram, you are assuming that the process you are describing is quasi-static, as in there's some moment in time in the evolution of your thermodynamic system, there is time when it had this pressure and this volume. And there was some earlier time when it had different pressure and volume. And you can track all those small infinitesimal changes and connect them into this path. That's what you're assuming when you, whenever you draw a path in a PV diagram. And with this process, I can... Um, Talk through why you can't do that. So imagine the moment in time when you have just to opened up this uh, uh, partition a little bit. Or I guess uh, if you do it really quickly, you can also talk about when um, when you have um, no partition at all. Here, um, I, I can ask this reasonable question of what is the volume of the gas? Is it this initial volume it started out with, V0? Or is it this entire volume of the container to V0? 
And as you look at it, I hope it's uh, uh, <laughs> unclear because in terms of the space that the gas molecules are occupying, yeah, that's a V naught. But once you remove the barrier, nothing is stopping the gases from escaping into this volume, so expanding to fill the entire 2 V naught. So there's this transition period during which time the volume of the gas is not well defined. It's somewhere between V naught and 2 V naught. But what it actually is, don't know. It's not well defined. And the same goes for pressure. It, um, so the, so you can almost imagine for these portions of the gas um, sample that you still had the same pressure you started out with. But what about gases in this region? What about the gases at the interface? On one side, they have nothing stopping them from expanding. That's what free expansion is. And on the other side, there's so it. Uh, if you want to nail down one value of pressure, you can't. So, so to the question, what is the pressure of the gas? The answer has to be um, we don't know. It's not well defined. So if we were to try to illustrate this on a PV diagram, we can't draw any paths. Uh, drawing a path implies that, um, that <laughs> it's quasi-static, which this is not. So, um, so we can draw any path. Um, I guess uh, sometimes uh, people will use a dotted line to indicate that the gas is moving from one state to the other. Uh, I like to just uh, do squiggly thing, you know, <laughs> just to highlight the undefined nature of pressure and volume while it's moving from one state to the other. And whatever you do, there is no path that you can draw. So there is no area under the curve. So um, so nothing that you would diagram on the PV diagram forces you to say, this is area under the curve, there's the work done. Instead, you have to go by the description of the setup. So an alternate description where there would be work done is if this partition here, um, this partition, instead of being uh, just removed, if it's being pushed out, then there would be work being done. Gas would be pushing against the partition, and that would be something that you can talk about. And in, in that scenario, you can also think about the process happening quasi-statically. Um, but in this setup, if the partition is just removed, being removed sideways suddenly, then then no work is being done. Uh, as the gas expands, it's not colliding against something to push it out, so no work is being done. Now, if uh, no work is being done, and the question was careful about saying how it's perfectly insulating, then it's an easy application of the first law of thermodynamics which says the change in internal energy is the net heat transfer minus the work being done by the gas. So there is no heat transfer and there is no work being done. And you can easily say that the internal energy of the gas does not change in the process. And I guess as far as the answer goes, that's an easy answer. And uh, I think this answer gets more confusing only as you try to compare this to other quasi-static processes you know. Um, when you are talking about expansion, you could uh, think about an isothermal expansion. Um, and when you have an isothermal expansion, so if it, this is an isotherm, then in order to maintain constant temperature, while the uh, gas is expanding and doing work, you have to have a heat going in. And um, that's what you would have for the quasi-static version of this process on isothermal expansion. Or if you insist on this perfectly, so you know, in this case, it cannot be perfectly insulating because there is a heat transfer. In if instead you ins insist on the perfectly insulating portion of the description, then um, then you have something where as the gas is expanding, it's doing work, 
So it, the gas cools, you have an um, adiabatic expansion. And um, the description that's uh, given in this question here, it has uh, both aspects of this adiabatic, quasi-static adiabatic process and the isothermal process. And really, these two different properties cannot be reconciled in uh, any quasi-static process. Uh, it, it, this is, so we treat this free expansion as its own thing. A free expansion is its own thing. And so this week we are going to be talking about uh, reversible and irreversible processes. And free expansion is one um, archetypal example of an irreversible process that doesn't involve any friction or um, typical imperfections that you think about. And it also doesn't involve any heat transfer that usually is involved in irreversible processes. This is kind of its own category of irreversible process. And, and that's illustrated when once we've introduced entropy um, in this um, expansion, even though there's no heat transfer, entropy increases. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that. That's kind of why the question is there. Um, I think that, is that the older questions? So yeah, I'll type in the answer just to verify that. This is one of those, um, I say, um, it's a conceptual question masquerading as a quantitative question because <laughs> once you understand the free expansion well, then the answers are just right there. You don't have to do any calculation.